Hello, I'm Dr Jenny Ostini. Uh, welcome everyone. And I'm Dr Susan Hopkins and we're here today to talk about celebrity activism. So Susan, I know you've been following the Bring Back Our Girl campaign with some interest. Yes, I think it makes an interesting case study of celebrity activism, but in particular not just the celebrity activism itself, but some of its interesting contradictions and complexities. So I don't really know about the story. I remember seeing some photos of celebrities holding um, posters on Twitter, so tell me about it. Yeah. Well, in April 2014, 276 female students aged from 16 to 18 were kidnapped from an all-girls secondary school in northern Nigeria. Uh, by Islamic militants. Now, there was, there was instability in the region for some time, uh, and this wasn't the first school to be attacked. However, the scale of the kidnapping was unprecedented, and it did attract some global attention. So, um, so I did see people like Cara Delvine, um, Julia Roberts, Kira Knightley, yeah. um, the. First Lady of the United States, they were holding up these signs and it just had the hashtag and bring back our girls. Did they know, like they didn't say what girls they were, where mm. they were, anything like that. What's the story behind that? Yeah, it's a good point, isn't it? Because we, we all saw the celebrities holding up the handwritten signs and the banners with the hashtag bring back our girls. But unfortunately, it's the nature of social media that we didn't really get the full story behind it or any in-depth understanding of, of the issue. Um, now, the first tweet actually, bring back our girls, was posted by a, a lawyer in the Nigerian capital, but it was only in May when the celebrities started to tweet that it really started getting global attention. So I think that in itself is an indication of the power of celebrity activism, but also some of its limitations. Yeah, I guess I'm just really thinking about, um, you know, why people got involved, how they got involved, and um, I know you're working on a book chapter about this, so can you talk about that a bit more? Yeah. Well, I hate to sound cynical, but there was some criticisms when the celebrities got involved, actually. There was a Nigerian journalist who suggested that the campaign, which was initiated in Nigeria um, and began, of course, with protests by the parents of the girls, uh, that it was hijacked by Western celebrities. The cynical interpretation was that it was in part for their own sort of artful self-promotion, not so much to be celebrity activists, but to be seen as celebrity activists. So that's one critical interpretation. Interpretation. Also, the same Nigerian journalist who made that accusation suggested that it was evidence not so much of the power of social media, but rather a kind of neo-colonialism or even neo-imperialism, where again, Africa uh, was being misrepresented by powerful Western elites. So do you think it's a good thing that those celebrities were speaking out in solidarity yeah. with other women? It is a good question because it's a good thing in the sense that it raised attention and awareness. And I think if it wasn't for those celebrity activists, then we wouldn't have had the Western governments come in as they did and send advisors, send the advisors to Nigeria to help try to recover the girls. Certainly it wouldn't have got anywhere near the attention it did. And it did put some pressure on the Nigerian government. And of course, uh, we do now have a new president there, but even he cannot promise to bring back these girls. So the celebrity campaign did fail in terms of reaching its major objective. Um, and it, it failed in the sense that the girls are still not back, but also part of their agenda was to uh, demand that girls and women in Nigeria have free access to education and, and also freedom from abuse and exploitation. However, we have to look seriously, don't we, at some of these celebrity feminists mm. and ask who are they to speak on behalf of women in the global south? And in fact, who are they to talk about freedom from exploitation and abuse when they've profited mm. from a wider system that, that enables and legitimates the exploitation of women in their own mm. cultures, in their own countries? So I guess that is where it really ties into our work together on neoliberalism and feminism. I think so. And that's why the focus here is on female celebrities. Not on... Now, I do know some men got involved. Yeah. So why, why this focus on female celebrities? Well, that is a good point, Jenny. Uh, well, the reason why I thought that the female celebrities were of particular interest, as you said, we've done previous work about the neoliberalisation of feminism. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is a really good example of that in some ways because... 
Well, certainly I've made the case in previous work that in this media celebrity age, celebrities often feed off politics mm -hmm. or the simulation of politics. So it becomes another way for them to construct and legitimate their own celebrity. Especially in social media, because if you think about it, social media is very content hungry even more content hungry than traditional broadcast media. And celebrities today, they have to give political statements in the sense of show other sides of their personality other than just, mm. you know, the, the typical shallow, uh, superficial idea of them as fashion models or, or pop stars. So they're all at pains to kind of construct this global identity as the model citizen. Mm. Uh, if we look at some celebrities with their global activism and their adoptions and so forth, they present not just an ideal sort of femininity, but an ideal cosmopolitan citizen that is globally aware and globally conscious. But as some of the activists in Nigeria have pointed out, are they really getting their hands dirty? Are, are they really doing anything effective other than yeah. just putting up these self-promoting selfies from the comfort of their own home? Is that really activism? Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that because when I was looking, you know, for you know, mm. who was involved and doing yeah. a bit of search of people's timelines, it was actually really hard to find. So, oh. um, you know, I, I searched very specifically for celebrities and for that hashtag Bring Back Our Girls, and um, you know, it was very much a blip in these celebrities' timelines. It wasn't oh, um, yes. something they did sustained over a long mm. period. Most of them weren't involved. You know, Angelina Jolie has been involved with the UN and so has Emma yeah. Watson. So that is part of, I guess, their their whole humanitarian yeah. engagement. But, uh, yeah, it's very much... It's hard to see what it really means to them and what it means, you know, other than just something they did at one point in time when everyone was doing yeah. it. You know, is it just the ice bucket challenge of oh, the so celebrity true, activism? It? Yeah, that's such a good point. And I think this is one of the criticisms, essentially, that with these social media digital campaigns, it's just a kind of, as you said, blip on the screen, mm -hmm. and then they move on to the next fashionable cause. In some sense, this is the nature of social media. It mm -hmm. is fleeting, uh, in part because it's constantly moving on, there's this constant hunger for content. However, those girls are still missing mm. and their parents still want answers about why are they still missing when all these powerful Western individuals, including celebrities, are involved. Obviously the issue is more complex. It's about African politics and corruption and there's a lot more going mm. on, but we never get that in-depth understanding. Yeah. Instead we get these kind of superficial selfie versions of activism. Mm. I guess for me, when I was looking at it, my question was, who or what is really the currency here? Is mm. it Boko Haram? Is it the girls? Is it the celebrities? Or is it the yeah. fans? You know, who are they actually marketing this, this hashtag towards? You know, who are they targeting it at? And that, and that yeah. for me, really is the big question. You know, not just why they get involved, but who do they see as the end user? or the viewer of that? Well, you know, it is an important question. I think part of the answer is that women are the currency. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it ties into our work about the neoliberalisation of feminism and the way women are used as currency, but not just in the global south, but also in Western culture as well. And this is part of the problem with celebrity activists, especially celebrity feminists in that they're blind to their own investment mm. in these wider systems that legitimate exploitation. After all, celebrity is fundamentally undemocratic when you think about it. It's based on elitism and dividing women against each other and assuming in our celebrity obsessed culture that some people have more value and worth than others, that they have a more privileged speaking position. So not just do they have this privileged speaking position because they're of the West, mm -hmm. which is kind of neo-imperialism, neo-colonialism in some sense, but also because they're these ideal models of femininity. Mm -hmm. But that comes at a cost. It comes at the, the cost of all those invisible others. Yeah, and I guess, you know, it leaves the question for me is, does raising awareness actually do anything? You know, what, mm. what happened to those girls? Well... Sadly, in the end, tragically, they're still missing. Mm -hmm. A small number did manage to escape, but on their own bravery and initiative. There were... Uh, the US, for example, has sent advisers, but unbelievably, appallingly, 
they still haven't got them. They still haven't recovered. The girls, the majority, are still missing. Parents in that part of northern Nigeria are still afraid to send their children to school, especially female children, because they are used as currency. They are caught in, in this conflict. They know they're more likely to be kidnapped. And Nigeria today has the highest uh, proportion of uneducated children in the world. So sadly, the celebrity campaign did not meet any of its objectives really except the objective to raise attention as you said for a fleeting amount of time. I guess the other question is given that Boko Haram is still you know even last mm. week was on the news um, you know has has anything even really been gained other than publicity for them you yeah. know what, what what have they they won from it but yeah. I guess um, at this point if we were celebrities <laughs> What would we what would we say? Well, along those lines, though, I guess we'd say bring back our girls. Yes. But you know, optimistically, I do hope that this video and, and our conversation does contribute something to the debate. That we're playing our own role in in raised awareness. But I think we're adding another layer to that which is making people aware that, yes, we all have a moral obligation. Celebrities, too, have a moral obligation to be aware of global issues and causes, to have a moral responsibility, a solidarity with those in the global south, but we also have a moral obligation to be aware of the contradictions and inconsistencies at work in our own patriarchal Western culture. And I think we have a moral obligation that if you're going to present yourself as the face of a campaign, as some of these models and pop stars and actresses have, then they need to also be fully informed on, on the issues. So I guess I'd like to think that we added to the debate and added another layer of complexity, but of course we acknowledge that in the end there's no right or wrong answers. OK, well, thank you for talking to me about this, Susan. Yeah. Thanks. And I mean, we can say it and we still say it with some hope, but, you know, some despair too, I guess, that to bring back our girls.